So my name is Marie Glenn, and I'm writing a book called Going for Broke, in which I examine whether or not it pays to follow our passions and do what you love. I happen to believe that it does. I also happen to believe that our society, especially Western society, and in particular our US society, often encourages the opposite. I believe that when it comes to making a choice between what is prudent and what truly sparks that inspiration within us, there will be every source of pressure to choose the prudent path. And that's not because society or all that care about you and me and all of us in our lives want you to be unhappy. Actually, I think it's because it's out of an abundance of concern for your well-being. The fact that you would leave safe lives, that you'd be cared for, that you would have stability and predictability and a means to put bread on the table, shoes on your feet, and a roof over your head. And those concerns are eminently reasonable and have become all the more acute given the state of our economy, which has been wobbly, which is the fancy economic word for volatile that I learned. But it also has become more acute because the things that help guide and inform what we do with our living have become more costly. College is expensive, jobs are hard to get, and so there is, I think, a drumbeat of pressure that's encouraging you, the TEDx youth, to do things that are safe, that are more risk averse, and that may not be aligned with what truly inspires you. The reason I feel that uh, it's so important and so powerful to embrace that which is passionate in your own life is because I think to do so shapes our sense of self. I think that when we follow something that truly inspires us, it helps form the membrane of our lives, it fuses uh, our lives with meaning, purpose, and connections, and I think all, we need all three to be a healthy society. I do not believe you should do what you feel passionate about in order to be happy. And I don't say that to be a curmudgeon, because I think sometimes happiness can be a byproduct of this. But I think it's far more important to embrace what you're passionate about, because doing so allows you to be authentic, to live authentically, to be most true, to be you unmasked. And that is to be deeply honest and present that face to the world. And that is frightening as heck. But I think to pursue an opposite path for a different motive, be it profit, lifestyle, status, stability, or predictability, means caving into other things. The need for control, certainty, stability, and predictability. And the problem with that is that life is always flicking us curveballs. And so we may succeed in tamping down uncertainty in one corner of our life. Perhaps we have amassed, you child geniuses out there, a very large nest egg and a long list of Hollywood movies that you'll be making over the course of your life. But no sooner than you tamp down uncertainty in those areas, then sure as not it will pop up like that game whack-a-mole in a bunch of other ones. And if you let those concerns be the guiding force in your own personal decision making, you will find it becomes sort of a hamster wheel and it's, it's, it's futile. Um, by contrast, if you could find a way to live authentically and embrace and listen to and heed voice to those things that inspire you, it forms roots, deep roots, and it allows you to put the focus on something outside of yourself. Because when you're invested in the thing you're passionate about, it is an external thing. It is all about the quest, the pursuit, the idea, the journey, and that is inherently more stable and it allows us to be open to change while, being, while staying true to our mission. So, I've made the case, and I will now condense a bunch of, of uh, baby step research into probably 30 seconds, and leave you with eight parting thoughts if I can remember them. So, um, the research that I have found so far is that there is an immense societal and personal cost, I think, when we allow prudence to come at the expense of our passion. Briefly told in six bullet points, the societal cost is less innovation, less growth, less economic expansion. Why? Because growth, economic expansion, all these other things require a certain openness to risk. It also requires a sense of optimism. More on that later when I actually write this book. On the personal cost, on the personal side, um, 
60% of Americans, according to two very expensively produced uh, consulting reports by Anderson and Mercer, have shown that 60% of Americans are in jobs in which they feel stuck, <coughs> deeply unhappy, and yet unable to move, or so they feel. And with that comes some health effects. It's no shocking surprise to imagine that rates of depression and anxiety increase when you feel like you're stuck, or when you feel like you're in something that doesn't really align with what you deeply care about and feels kind of cheesy after a while to be spending 60 to 80 hours a week at a job that doesn't really tie with what you care about so much. There are also productivity and ceiling effects and other things that sound really boring, so I will not go on about them. So I've laid the business case, or at least attempted to, for why I think it's so important to honor what you're passionate about, but I haven't really told you what it is or how to do it. So that's my eight points, very quickly. The first is to be passionate involves three things, conviction, vision, and humility, and you need all three. I'll also tell you what it's not. It's not pink hearts, roses, and Hallmark cards overflowing with sentiment. It's not about loving something, like baking cakes or starting a business. It's not blind or naive or insipid or thoughtless. It's fed by intellectual curiosity. It's honest, it's organic. It's deeply rooted. Number two, to be passionate requires that you be accountable. It may be your dream to open a cake business or become a super successful hedge fund investor, but life will not serve your dreams up to you on a platter. You have to earn respect. You have to earn the journey. You have to have your eyes open to the fact that when you embrace one passion, it means you're following other things to a lesser extent. Implicit in that are trade-offs. Those trade-offs sometimes stink, but you have to accept that as part of the journey. You have to own it. You have to be accountable for it. Number three, to do all that, you have to have faith. I don't necessarily mean religious faith, though if you have it, that's great. My faith is pretty secular. It's deep-rooted. We all have a voice. We call it a bunch of different names, but deep inside us, we all have that inner voice but it's really hard to hear it because our lives are really noisy. We have chatter in our heads, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. We have noise and distraction all around our lives. We have to learn to be still, to listen, and to honor it because inside that is the nugget of the truth that will inform us. To do that, number four requires self-awareness, but to have self-awareness, you have to have life experience, and to have life experience, you have to try a whole lot of things. You have to try a whole lot of things to do the things that build resilience that you've heard about 52 different speeches about and it's really important. But you have to try a whole lot of things because doing so helps you find out what bores you to death. It also tells you what you love. And doing that also shows how you react to those conditions. Number four, you, you can't force the path. It's so very tempting to want to do that. I know myself, we all, human nature, love to have plans. We love to be able to know what the journey will entail, right? Because we're so deeply, deeply vested for all the reasons that are so very understandable to de-risk everything. But planning can get in your way, which leads me to step something. I can't remember my count anymore. Um, that you only ever need to know enough to take the first step. And when I hear that, that sounds so cliched, right? Any journey starts with one step, and it's like, duh, because how else are you going to get there? But the awakening for me in thinking about that is that, that all you ever really need to know is enough to take a step. We don't have to know. It doesn't mean being blind to the fact that there may be 64 steps beyond that, but it means you don't need to force the process. You only need to be able to sort of trust that that's sort of um, that, that vision and have in mind your outcome. And, and I guess the best metaphor that comes to mind that's, that, that um, illustrates that for me is that of, uh, if anybody's ever surfed or boogie boarded or just ridden waves, um, you know that your goal is to sort of get to shore, right? And hopefully as, as fun a way as you possibly can. But you also know you, you can't force the waves you're gonna get. You can pick them. You can influence how you ride them but you can't choose the forces that are hitting. You can't choose your tie. And it's the same thing. There is, I think, a human tendency to want to compel forces to suit your own plans and control it, but you can't. You have to sort of let go. 
And with all that, you need to uh, um, be gentle with yourself. Pursuing your passions is not uh, something that requires strict observance. It's not a zero-sum game. Um, you, can, you can do your day job. Um, I do. But it, it, it is more about the pursuit, about honoring that, and about finding a way to let that be what makes, um, what makes up the, the decision framework for you. And lastly, why am I talking to you, TEDx youth? I'm talking to you because you are it. You are it. Over the course of your lives, you're going to be faced with problems of mind-numbing complexity. For those of you who play sports, soccer, or football, or what have you, you've probably heard coaches say in that season-ending game to leave nothing on the field. It is the very same here. We cannot afford, as a society, and you cannot afford, to leave anything in your socks, in your bureaus, under your mattress, and come to your profession, your vocation, your avocation, with anything other than your full, your full self there. So we need every scrap of ingenuity, your imagination, your creativity, to be able to tease out and uh, resourcefully resolve some of these critical issues that we will all be dealing with. So be you, go for it, and um, thank you.